This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Tech, show number 159, recorded on March 20th, 2014. Here on Home Tech, we cover all your favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News, reviews, product updates, and conversation all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the Average Guy TV studios. Here in a very nice spring has arrived in Bellevue, Nebraska, and uh, there's nothing better than spring in the Midwest and some warmer weather. And, of course, we post the show each week with world-class show notes out at the Average Guy TV. If you have questions, comments, or contributions, a couple different ways you can get those into us. Email the show. Just send me an email, Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv. Of course, you can find me on Twitter, and we just crossed. Uh, if you listened to the show last week, I was begging for seven more people to push me over 1,000, and we made it that night. So I appreciate you guys doing that. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at Jay Collison, or now you can call in those questions, and a couple of you did that. And actually, I got a message Kevin and I will talk about a little bit later in the show uh, through Audioboo, which is something I haven't uh, – I forgot you can record a message there on Audio Boo, but you can get that into us. Uh, call that in, 402 478 8450, and we'll play that uh, on the show. If you got a question you'd like us to answer, do that as well. And now, Home Tech is a part of the Geeks Network. Find the links to this show and many other ones, uh, many other really good podcasts going on, Home Server Show, and some of those as well over at the Geeks Network. TheGeeksNetwork.com. Join us in chat, which, listen live and all that navigation that we have for both uh, PC and for tablets, and even your Windows phone or iPhone or Android phone, all that stuff is available on our uh, on the live page, theaverageguy.tv slash live or slash live2. That will get you there as well. Okay, we got a great show for you tonight. We uh, I've been pimping this for the last four weeks or so and, and uh, pretty excited about talking about the on-air player. We have uh, uh, Daniel Volka from uh, San Francisco, and he is the co-owner, founder, and CEO, co-founder, I think, and CEO of On Air Player. Daniel, thanks for coming on and being a part of the show tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, you're yeah. welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. We uh, we found you, or I found you, actually through Facebook, and uh, I had gotten a message, I'd seen it somewhere, and I clicked on On Air Player, and I it, I, it was a like thing, you know, hey, maybe you'll like this, and... So maybe you guys were doing some marketing through Facebook. Uh, but I took a look at it, and I kind of said, uh, I was like, this, this is kind of an interesting product. Um, but before we dive into that, I want to know a little bit about you so nobody knows you. Tell us a, a, about you, where you're from, how you ended up in San Francisco, maybe how you got the company started. Let's just start with a little bit about you. Hmm. Well, um, yeah, I came to the States, to San Francisco, some seven years ago. Um, started to work at SAP. Um, and worked there for some five years down in the valley um, as a computer scientist, doing all kind of interesting coding and stuff, more on the enterprise side. And about two years ago, I quit my job there and started pursuing my, my passion. Um, I was always a big music geek and just saw an opportunity there where I thought, this is missing, nobody's doing this, let's just try. So it was a, started as a side project and more and more become, became more and more serious and at some point, yeah, I went full time on it and since that, I'm, I'm working on an air player, yeah, pretty much have bootstrapped it from, the, from scratch. Now, um, you, you don't, right obviously you're not here from the United States, you came from Germany, what, what really made you... What, why the move to, you know, there's a thriving tech community in, in Europe and especially in Germany. What made you want to come to the West Coast? Well, look outside the weather, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, true. That is true. <laughs> not only. I mean, it's what, on the one hand, the uh, weather and climate here is awesome, but as, as thriving as a tech scene is in Europe, it's, it is good, but nothing compares to Silicon Valley. And as a computer tech guy, this is like the, the mecca to go to. And so I was offered a, a position here. And, yeah, I just came for six months initially to give it a try and, yeah. I'm in love with this place and stayed. Well, a good reason uh, in the pre-show, you and I talked a little bit about San Francisco, and it's one of my favorite cities of all time. I would never want to live there because of the crazy traffic and those things, but it's a great place to spend a week or two, and uh, and so I'd like uh, to do that. As uh, you know, I I haven't been out there in a couple of years. So I want to do that as well. 
Uh, I, I missed Kevin, and I want to bring Kevin in real quick and just introduce him. Kevin Schoonover. Kevin, of course, has been on the show a lot, and when we talk about home servers and media stuff, Kevin is the go-to guy. He seems to know more than anybody else, and so, Kevin, welcome, and feel free to jump in here as I ask some questions. Absolutely. So, Daniel, let's go back to the, so you said the on-air player about two years ago. You're kind of a music geek, uh, so you kind of started this idea. Tell us how it got, you know, those early days as you started coding, and then kind of bring us up to speed with where you're at now with on-air player. Hmm. I think it all started when I, for the first time, had an iPad in my hand in some Apple store. Um, that's for the first time, my first tablet, actually, that I was playing around with, and here at home, I always connected all my, I, I, as I said, I'm a music geek, it's all connected, and it's, it somehow works, I can stream from everywhere to everywhere, but on the one hand, it's really complex, or was complex to set all that up, and it's still a little iffy to use it, always turn a TV on there and use the mouse uh, every time you need to um, skip to the next song, and when I had that iPad in my hand, I thought, Geez, this is exactly what you need. You want to sit on your couch, you want to have this thing in your hand and control the music and actually have the music played on those good stereo that I, that I spent quite some money on. And actually, I want my, my music not to be limited to the music on my iPad, but should be able to be everywhere on my server in my room next door or in the cloud or whatever. So that was pretty much how it started. I just thought, why is there nothing like that out there? And... I found some things, but um, nothing that really satisfied me to the extent where I thought this is exactly what I want. So I started playing with it and coding a bit and got into it. And yeah, one thing, one step, to, um, get to the next, and here I am. Yeah. How, Daniel, how hard is it to do a startup in the San Francisco area? I mean, you're in one of the most expensive retail markets. We might have. We might. Have. Can you still hear me, Daniel? Yeah. I kind of, I can oh, hear okay, you. good. Good. You you froze up on me, so I just want to make sure. Um, you're in one of the most expensive real estate markets in the world, and uh, and here you are starting your own company. How, how did? How is that going? How many employees do you have? How many developers are there? Are there? There's other folks. If you're the co-founder, there's got to be at least another one there. Uh, yeah. How has that process gone for you? Yeah. Quite well so far. I mean, yeah, starting a company is both a lot of fun and very exciting and extremely hard at the same time. Um, it's the process itself has been pretty going well. I mean, I'm, I never regretted doing it. So we are right now. My co-founder is Pen Fan Sun. She's our designer. Um, basically, designed everything um, you see about an air player, website players, and everything. And then we have two more employees that are helping me with the coding side. So we're basically right now a team of four plus whenever we need some help here or there, maybe a contractor, but it's a core team. And I assume are those other two full-time as well? Yeah. Meanwhile, they are. I mean, haven't been all the time, but ramping up slowly right now they are full-time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's that's awesome. You're in the heart of, of you know, the tech mecca there in San Francisco, a lot of incubation of, of new tech companies that are there. One of the things, and so for folks who haven't already, if you're listening on the video or if you're listening on the audio or the video, head out to onairplayer.com. You'll want to take a look at this. They've done a nice job on their site of kind of laying out what it does. Now, uh, we, all, uh, we all come from kind of a home server community. A lot of the folks that listen here um, were folks that came out of one of our very first podcasts where we talked about the home server show or the, that's the home server product. And so we all are used to consolidating all our files in one place, right? We, we are constantly thinking about doing that. One of, the unique, um, one of the unique things about what you're doing is you don't ever have to move your music from any of the devices that you have, right? It just plays them from, so I can, if it's on my phone and I'm on the iPad, I can play it as long as I have connectivity to my phone, right? That's, that's it, it doesn't require movement, right? Correct, yeah, that's exactly what it's about. So the idea really is simple yet powerful. Whatever device you can, you grab, you take in your hand, you simply have all your music in, in the list and can play it, no matter where it is stored. So it can be stored locally on your device, it can be stored on your phone, it can be stored on some computer. You can link as many devices as you want, and whatever device you grab, you always have the sum of the music of that is stored on all the devices that you have imported from all those devices. So yeah, there is no more. It's we're trying to 
so far there has been two ways to actually being able to access your music. Um, one is either you connect all your devices and you sync. So first you consolidate everything somewhere locally into one server, and then whatever device you grab, you connect it via USB cable and you sync all the music and get into that hell, or you upload everything to something like Google Drive or so, which probably takes you a week or two or more, depending on your new music collection and internet speed. And so both of those are kind of a pain. And our approach is, yeah, to get rid of that necessity to begin with. Um, simply say you don't need to consolidate anymore. Simply have an AirPlayer running on all your devices. Make sure they're on, and then the music is just there. You don't even see in the UI where the music is coming from. It just is there. It just works, um, even in the browser. And that's the key, right? Those devices have to be on and connected. One of the one of the questions I asked you in the pre-call before we did is, what if I'm in a, you know, what if that that MP3 is on my phone and it's in a bad, you know, my phone happens to be in a bad service area or is not connected uh, with some good bandwidth? Uh, how does how does your product handle that when when it's the the you know where it's being pulled from may not have really a, a very good connectivity? Mm. Well. Usually the case is that you have most of your music somewhere consolidated or at least on some computer at home, maybe on multiple not consolidated, um, and then you have that music synced onto your phone, right? So you usually have it on two or more, uh, more locations anyways. On AirPlayer detects that and doesn't show you doubles in the list but shows it only as one song, and when you play it, it decides what device to take it from. So it always takes it from the device with the best internet connectivity. And we also detect if the device completely goes offline. So if you turn off your computer at home, then all those files that were only on that computer and not on any other will simply be hidden, so you don't see them anymore. You cannot try to play them. Are they, um, are, they yeah, grayed, are they grayed out so you can't see them? Like you know you have it, but it's just not available, or is it completely removed off the music list? Um, right now it's actually completely removed off, but we're thinking about changing that to be grayed out at the end, yeah. People might get confused. When, when that, you talk, when you talk about changes like that, how, how tied in is the user community to to what you're doing? Do you get a lot of feedback from users that are using your product? And I mean, it sounds like you guys are fairly agile, so you can move pretty quickly. Are you getting yeah. a lot of feedback from your customers? We are, we are. Um, so right now, we haven't really launched big time yet. It's I would call the current state that we're in an extended public beta, um, a few thousand users. And yeah, uh, very. It's it's the core users, I would say, the the geeks uh, that love streaming their music around and play with new technology. And I'm getting a lot of valuable valuable feedback about things that could be better here or there. And we're actively working on incorporating as much as we can of that. So, if any of the listeners um, has ideas how to make it better, I'm open ears. Feedback is always welcome. He's he's very responsive. <laughs> so so Kevin, talk a little bit about you have uh, you've been using the product this week and uh, tried some things out. So give us a little rundown on uh, maybe the use for you and then uh, an example of how responsive they've been. Sure. So um, I downloaded the app to one of my many Android tablets and uh, I think I started with my HP Slate. Um, came up work fine, uh, loaded it on my home PC that has uh, um, all of my music on it, and you know, I guess the first concern, uh, wh whenever I've tried to use products like this in the past, whether it's um, the app with my Sonos product, or um, there was another product here a few years ago, um, Twonky Beam, that was trying to do a similar kind of thing. Um, it seemed like if you were if you pointed that product to try and get it to manage a folder of music on a Windows PC that had Windows Media Center running or Media Player running, it, it just seemed to create a problem. I, I, I never had great luck with that. If I took that same folder of music and popped it over to a NAS or you know just a, a file share someplace, um, always worked perfect. So um, actually, you know, uh, On Air was one of the first products I've seen where I, I just pointed it at my folder on my uh, PC here. It picked up all the songs and uh, seems to give me access to all of them. And uh, my second big concern, and uh, someone in chat will ask me why, but uh, 
uh, it did not seem to have any problem with the fact that I have um, well over 120,000 songs and it uh, you know, no, nobody should have 120,000 songs but I do and uh, <clears throat> it, it didn't seem searches take quite a while but uh, um, that's that's something I've seen with other tools like this is they choke on that much song volume or they're they're not able to categorize that. So I guess that was one of my questions to Daniel: Is there is there a, a song limit or uh, you maybe a uh, um, uh, a recommended cata catalog size or where where are you at with that? Mm. Um, yeah, well, I mean, 120,000 songs is probably outside any recommended catalog size for any software. <laughs> um, but yeah, so right now we're actually working on having no limits there. Um, I'm not saying that if you would put 500,000 songs on it that you wouldn't crash it. Probably it could still. Um, but if you do, we'll fix it. Our plan, our, our our goal is to have it work with a million songs if it needs to be. Um, so just have no limit there because that's one of those shortcomings that you have if you would uh, traditionally upload everything to the cloud, right? You pretty soon run out of um, memory up there, out of disk space, or it gets pretty damn, damn expensive paying for it. So one um, advantage of using an AirPlayer for that is it's all on your home computers. It's your own hard disks, so you can have as much songs as you can fit your hard disk, so we're trying to not limit that software-wise. That being said, we're still in a in a beta mode, so um, I'm glad your 120,000 users work well. If you put a million at it, <laughs> I cannot yet. If it doesn't work, contact us. We'll fix it. Well, that that sounds good. I uh, and from a usage point of view, just uh, prior to the show starting, I did throw it on my. Uh, my wife has a Nook, and it, uh, it it works on the Nook, so it came right up. And I I'd, uh, I'd asked about D DLNA devices, and as I was looking through the list on here, so it's got my Samsung tablet, my Motorola tablet, my HP tablet, my Nook, and then there was something popped up that I didn't recognize, and then I realized my daughter's downstairs watching a movie on a DVD Blu-ray player, and it picked up the Blu-ray player as a DLNA device. So... Um, it did grab that one up and seems to be pretty pretty astute at picking up uh, the the DLNA uh, products as well. Yeah. So the way an AirPlayer works is maybe we should step one back there that yeah. for users that haven't tried it yet. Um, you cannot only access all your so on the one hand you can access all your music from all the devices. Whatever your device you grab, you have all your music in one big list and can search over it and have playlists and everything. But then there's also, I'm not sure how well you can see it, maybe I do a screen share later, there's that stream to button where you simply can select on what devices the music should play. Um, so there's, you simply tell the system, I want it on my TV right now or on my stereo or my laptop or on my phone. You simply select the devices where the music should come out of, even multiple at a time, and then it works. And then you can select the songs and it plays there. And uh, one of the special things about an air player is all this um, works across networks, so there is no need to be in the same Wi-Fi anymore. Um, you can take your phone, you just came home, forgot to turn on Wi-Fi, it still works. You can say next song and it still remote controls your computer that is connected to your local Wi-Fi at home. Um, and those devices where you, that allow you, or that list of devices um, where you can simply select to stream to, um, to stream the music to, is uh, made out of, on the one hand, all your installations of on AirPlayer. So if you have installed on AirPlayer on your phone, tablet, computer, and so on, all those show up. But on top of that, if any of those devices locally finds another device it can stream to, um, like that DLNA um, Blu-ray player of yours, um, then that will simply be added to the list, and you can select it, and it'll work. So it even works if you're now listening to a song from your phone and you're not in your local Wi-Fi, so it's on 4G or so, and you select stream to that um, DVR, what an AirPlayer will do is it'll stream to your local computer, which can see the DVR, which then passes it on to the, to the DVR. So yes, um, DLNA devices are supported. They're automatically detected and simply added to the list. 
Kevin, you've got a little orange, so put your hand up to your camera there, and let's see if we can reset you. Uh, it, no, you that made it worse. <laughs> it's all right. We'll, we'll, Let me, we'll get, uh, yeah, we'll get you. There we go. We'll get you fixed. Daniel, uh, Barrett, perfect. Thank you. Uh, Daniel, from a uh, monetization standpoint, so you say you're in beta. I couldn't find anywhere in there where you were making any kind of money on this thing yet from a... What are your monetization plans? Because, you know, none of this stuff can work free forever. What are you guys thinking yeah. in the future? Have you thought all the way through that yet? Yeah, yeah, we have. We have some plans. I mean, for now, it's all free, um, obviously, as you saw. Um, down the road, there will be some kind of freemium model. So there will be always a free version, um, as it is right now. Maybe at some point, some ads will pop up um, if you use the free version. And then we'll have a premium version that removes all the ads and adds some cool new functionality and stuff like that. So that is one one model, um, and yeah, we're playing with a few others too. We're thinking about maybe adding online storage that you can optionally simply say five gigabytes or so, your favorite five gigabytes of your music will automatically be, detect be detected by an airplay and behind the scenes stream to some online server where you um, then are not affected anymore if your home computer suddenly runs out of uh, the... the um, if you have a power outage at home, the home computer is off or so. But, um, yeah, there will definitely be a way how you can dump some dollars on us if you like. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> these, these services, I, I'm always leery when, they're, when they say free forever just because, you know, eventually you guys want to make some money off this. And yeah. so just wondering what your thoughts are on there going forward. Uh, uh -huh. One of the guys, the other Jim in chat says, uh, when you use, uh, so when you use stream to, in other words, if you're if you're on your TV, right, or if you're on, say, you're on your iPad and you're pulling it off your phone, it's physically coming off your phone and going to the iPad, right? I mean, that's the, it's streaming right off one device and going to the next, correct? Correct. Yeah, that's really an in on-demand in, in in between devices streaming. Correct. Yeah. And I, I like the idea of uh, that. Uh, the more your more popular music, Amazon kind of does a little of this with their weird caching for your music, where the more you use it, then it remembers it on the device, and it starts, you know, it keeps it on the device local, so you don't have to go back to the cloud to get it, so I love that idea. You know, I had this thought about listening to podcasts, because many of us are big podcast listeners. Those are just MP3 files. I'm assuming if I download that, if I have a file where I download my podcast, I could point it toward those and listen to my podcasts on any device, same way? Of course. That should work. Exactly the yeah. same thing. I mean, it's an MP3 after all. The uh, player does not make any difference whether it's a song or somebody speaking. Yeah. So yeah. Um, you, it's even if you just download it into your folder that you have imported on Windows or Mac, um, we're monitoring those. So in the moment you download it, it will automatically be detected and just show up on all your devices a few seconds later. You know what would be cool is some here. So here's a here's a uh, request for a, for new enhancements. What would be cool is a little bit of a whisper a whisper sync, especially with podcasts, where I could be listening to it on my phone, and and then when I get home and I bring up the on air player on my PC, it picks up automatically right where I left off. Or maybe that's already does that already work? That Something? does already work. Oh, Surprise. Hey, look <laughs> yeah. at that. Yeah, um, so if you use that stream to, you listen to a song, start at one device, and simply click on the stream to button. Maybe we show the UI at some point. Yeah, so yeah, bring, let's, let's do that, that now. Let's do um, that now. And Kevin, yeah. don't let me hog the whole thing. Jump in here with your questions as well. But, yeah, see yeah. if you can get your screen connected there. Yep. If you're uh, listening to the audio-only version of this, you might want to pop over to the theaverageguy.tv slash HT159. The video will be embedded there, and uh, you can come to about the 20-minute mm, mark, and that should, uh, or 25-minute mark, that should get you there. Okay, oh, let me bring that up for you. Hold on, full screen. There we go. Uh, let's see. Does that work? Do you see the whole player, yep. or is that uh, only yep. a... Nope, okay. we see the whole thing. Yeah, now, how are yeah. you doing that? You're just screen sharing from your Mac, right? Yes, I'm screen sharing from my Mac right now. That's the Mac version of, of the player. Um, so what you can see here, that's my, my local library now, where I can simply access all my music. Most of that is actually on another computer, my Windows, com my Windows machine. Um, some of it is on the Mac, some of it is on the phone. Um, and I can play any song. Let's play something. Oh, maybe not, because I don't hear you anymore. <laughs> um, but... 
this is the stream to button that we were talking about earlier. So um, not only I simply have all my songs here in one list, but once I hit the stream to button, I get all my devices, and I can listen to it on one device and during playback simply add multiple other devices too. So you can not only stream to one device, but even multiple at a time. And you can also, during playback, add any device or remove any device from the list. That seamlessly works. So yes, you can listen to your podcast and your... You can listen to your podcast in your um, on your phone. Come home, continue having, continue playing it on your media center. Then opening up a web browser and picking it up there and continuing listening there. So, I, I notice in the window the term "play on" and in certain menus it says "stream to." Is there any difference in the nomenclature there? There is not. That should be a little better. Um, even though, yeah. It's okay. the same thing. It's I might have found a new podcast uh, player. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, use, I use Beyond Pod on the uh, on um, on Android to listen to my podcast. Most of the time, I'm listening to them in the car, but from time to time, I'll get it. I'll pull in the garage, and you know, I could. It's connected via Bluetooth to my car stereo, and I could come in the house and play that on any number of things uh, with a little bit of trickery. In this case, it would really be nice. I could just say okay, now I want you to play that on my computer, right? And it'll just automatically start picking up from where I left off and just keep playing it. Correct, yeah. yeah. Exactly what it does, yeah. Yeah, and it would be it'd be probably better for me to then download those podcasts at home to the the place where the bandwidth is the best. Today I download them on my phone, and that's okay. Mm. In this scenario, I could download them uh, home and then just stream them. Uh, basically, I'm streaming them as I listen to them. I guess there's... People have different opinions about whether it's better to listen to it streaming or better to listen to it downloaded, but um, interesting. Yeah. Uh, and, and as as it, you know was said earlier, the, the first thing I did with this was you know got it running on one tablet. The next day I took that tablet to work, and that's a, a tablet. I have one of those little um, Belkin Bluetooth devices to allow uh, Bluetooth devices to connect right to a stereo receiver. And, uh, you know, literally I had my whole music collection from home uh, in the office w without having to load it up. And, and you know, one of the things I, I had done in the past, um, I just changed offices at work. I've always had a little media computer at the office with the one terabyte drive with all this music on it. So, you know, literally for one use case, I could look at on player as you know, giving me the ability to listen to all my music in the office or on the road or wherever <clears throat> and not have to have uh, that extra computer in the office or extra drive or, you know, extra storage space. Um, you know, there are a lot of, uh, if you look at, you know, the Synology boxes, if you have one of those for backup, there's, uh, you know, some audio streaming apps on those as well. But they tend to be fairly point-to-point. -point. You know, they just give you a way to tie one device back in and I, I think a real advantage with uh, the on-air player here is this, you know, multiple devices, multiple touch points of, uh, of being able to stream and be able to, you know, have some automation there to uh, listen to something on the way home and pick it up when you walk in the house. Yeah, yeah. And you don't, ex you actually don't even need your um, your tablet with you at work. Um, we have a web player too. So right. you can Absolutely. use your tablet in the car, um, listening to it there, and at work you simply open up a browser and you have sure. all your music there too and listen to it. And even if you want to play pranks on your wife at home or your dog who stay at home, you can turn on the music at home if you like. <laughs> Not that it makes much sense, but <laughs> it No, we try it. Somebody would try it for sure. <laughs> yeah. That's, it's funny you mention that because my my latest obsession is uh, home automation products and uh, a lot of the home automation things are tying into your home audio system to, you know, allow you to make announcements or kick off music. So that'll probably be my next thing is to see how I can uh, how I can tie this in with home automation uh, as well. Daniel, um, one of the guys is asking, let me find it again, it was um, about uh, supported codecs. So MP3, obviously, but are there any other any other file extensions that you guys support? Yes. Um, actually, we have a 
a special way how we treat that. Um, we do not decode music ourselves at all. On AirPlayer itself, is more like shuffling the music from where it is to where it needs to be and remote control everything. But we use a local media player um, that is on a local system to actually render it, um, which is on Windows, it's Windows Media Player. On Mac, it's um, the Mac audio layer. On Android, it's the Android um, media player. Um, so it's basically every device, every codec that is supported by these local media players um, will be supported by on AirPlayer. And one specialty is if we find VLC, Video LAN um, client, installed on your machine, then we'll find that and use it to play all those codecs like Flux and others that are a little more fancy and less supported in the in the mainstream player. So yes, we we'll play. Depending on your setup, we play pretty much everything. So it really does try to take advantage of what's local uh, in, in the use here. This is, I mean, besides the streaming fact, you are kind of interrogating the local device, whatever that is, and taking advantage of whatever's installed there. Correct, yes. Um, that's simply, I mean, we are, it's on the one hand a technical thing because um, we started off being a very, not only cross networks but also cross platform product right we have um, products where we have apps for android phone android tablet we are gaming console google tv um, windows mac linux and the web i forget something no, i think that was it um, and so it's this is just the easiest way to actually make it work everywhere seamlessly by using what is already there on those local platforms and reusing the working system instead of building it yourself. On top of that, uh, it would make a little would make it a little complicated um, with license payments if we were to actually really decode those codecs mm -hmm. ourselves. We would basically have to pay for every codec that we do. We would have to pay some cents for every download that we have. And this, this way, we simply don't do it, so we don't have to pay that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good, right? It's, it's already covered. The licensing yeah. is already covered. Uh, any thoughts to video? Are you guys doing trying that out, or is just video... Yeah, what are your thoughts on video? Um, on the long-term roadmap. For sure. Um, so the way an AirPlayer is built, um, the technology underneath, um, it is not specific to, to music or audio only uh, at all. You could reuse the technology to just build the same thing for a video if you like. Um, we just decided that we start, we, we concentrate on one thing to start with, do that really, really well, as good as we can, and once that takes off, extend it or do a second product next to it using the same technology to do the other thing really well. So. We, we figured trying to do everything a little bit will just destroy the product to start with. So no video, there's no video yet. At some point, if on AirPlayer is a huge success, probably there will be a on AirPlayer video too. Yes. And any thoughts to making it interactive with Amazon or Google Music? You know, I've 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 pushed I personally have pushed all my music to the Amazon Music Cloud. Can, I, I assume today I can't access that, or can I? Today not, um, but we're actually planning to do that oh, good. sooner than later. Um, the, the whole idea about an air player is access your music wherever it is stored. So for now, that wherever it means whatever device at home, be it your computer or tablet or phone, but um, cloud could be one of those devices too. So we're working on integrating those cloud services like Amazon or Google Drive or Dropbox or... I don't want to promise too much at this point, but there will be some cloud storage integration. Yeah. Very cool. Kevin, what else? Um, you know, the, uh, for anybody trying this, if you do run into problems, the uh, frequently asked questions section is really good. Um, there is, I, I did notice on almost every device I tried it on, the, um, the first time I would bring it up and run it, I'd have, it looked like things were playing, but I had no audio. And, uh, a, Rebooting, you know, stopping the song, rebooting the device seemed to take care of that, and it sounds like you're, you're working on that fix as well. But that that seems to be a fairly common one, uh, and and all my stuff is Android that I've tried it on so far. Um, the web the the web player seems to work fine on everything. So um, I think the only thing I haven't tried that on yet is a, a Windows RT. So I'll give that a shot and make sure that works as well. Yeah, we're actually working right now on finishing a Windows Store app that will run on Windows RT tablets. Windows? Really? Yeah. 
<laughs> Everybody here will be happy to hear that. We're, we're we have quite a few Windows Phone, Windows fans that are here, and so that okay. would be awesome as well. Yeah, that's great. I mean, unfortunately, no Windows Phone yet, only tablets. I basically okay. ported the the tablet version that you the same thing that you see on the Web UI or on your um, Android tablet. I um, ported that to Windows, and that UI is not really suited for small form factor phones yet. Yeah, well, you'll, you're you're part of the way there, right, in some of the work that yeah. you're doing. So you'll, yes, you'll get, that will be eventually, but we are We are Windows Phone guys. There's, there's a lot, you know, that, that we do. We're probably the only community on the planet that talks about Windows Phones, but we, we, do, um, we do talk about that. Kevin, what else do you got? Anything? Uh, boy, I think we've hit uh, we've hit all of them. Um, it, it, I guess the only other thing I was going to ask uh, Daniel is the, um, you know, would it be beneficial to you know give you feedback on devices that we found it to work on or devices that we're having tr trouble with? I know you've you've got your email out there for that. I'm just curious as to how much information would be helpful for you to to get from the community. The more the better. Okay. Um, so yes, please. If you try it and something doesn't work out of the box the way it should, please shoot me an email or contact me on Twitter or Facebook or um, yeah, I'm always happy to hear about that. Always happy to help. The way on Air Player is envisioned to be working is really more for the non techies. Um, so for for the normal people out there, it should be as simple as install next next finish login and it works. Um, you should not be having to fiddle around to make things work. And if you ever actually do, um, then we're very interested in fixing that for your specific device. And please let us know. Yeah. yeah very good. That's, that's great to know because I, I think a lot of times, you know, they're made for tech and uh, the average guy kind of gets kind of gets lost in the shuffle uh, of that yeah. or can't, uh, can't figure it out. One more, I've got two more questions for you and then we'll let you go. Uh, other Jim out of chat asked, how synchronized can the players be if I want several rooms to play the same song at the same time on different devices, like when you're hosting a big, gigantic rave party at your house. Um, will they all play together? If you if you send it to those devices, will they be in sync that, that good? We are working on it. Um, so yes and no. They are currently roughly in sync, plus minus a second or two, um, which is not good enough if you have two stereos in the same room or so. It'll have a, a terrible echo. Um, but we're actually working on getting it down to the millisecond so that you can really can have two stereos next to each other and just sounds like one. Yeah, so, that'd be awesome. Party yeah. mode. Exactly. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, put a put a party mode button and they all then every device turns on automatically and you just have a big you, know, you just have a big party. That would be pretty cool. One yeah, of the you can. Especially since that on AirPlayer works across networks, you could do even other cool things. Um, we might play around with them at some point. Some kind of now that you mentioned party mode, you throw a party at home, you stream to your five rooms and control it from your tablet or so while walking around. Um, imagine your friends um, that did not join your local Wi-Fi, but they have their phone with them too. Think, oh damn, I have that one song that I want to yep. play. If they could just scan a QR code or so, or even just by load by proximity, oh join party and then they can add something to your queue and can play something. So things like yeah. that is what we're Yeah. That's a that's kind of about. a group a groove shark concept. They've they do a little bit of that where you can broadcast your own and then people can suggest songs yeah. and you can play those. It'd be great if if you know if yeah, there was a social component to that and if if we friended each other then and you you shoot me a song, when I play it, I have the permissions to pull it off your device and yeah. Just playing it. I wonder if that. If I'm sure there's licensing problems yeah. with that. Yeah, probably at that point. Once we do that, we'll have to get some some contracts in place to keep that legal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So far, it's only ideas. So there's got to be a way to share point. music, right? I mean, there, yeah. there's got to be a way to get that done. Last question for you: In that, uh, you, on your site, you say I'm a developer. Are there any ways to extend the on-air player? Are you are you looking for additional developers to to think about additional functionality? How do you approach that if there's somebody who, and then, you know, what kind of, what would I need to know as a developer to be able to do those kinds of things? Um, yes, we are. So if you have concrete ideas how to integrate on AirPlayer with some other device out there, stream to, I don't know, your Roku box or whatever is your favorite gadget and you think on AirPlayer is great, but why isn't it there? Um, happy to talk about it. Um, it is 
we do not yet have a published um, API that you can simply use off the website, but internally it is built very modular and it is relatively simple to add music sources like input sources, new online storage um, sources for instance, or add new device types that you can stream to, like your Roku box or whatever else. Um, it's relatively easy to add those things, um, or at least there's an API for that. So if you're if you're a hacker and want to get your hands dirty, just shoot me an email and I might just send over the API. Yeah, there you go. Very good. Uh, I, I lied. One more question. Do you have anything that you want to share with us that we didn't cover? Any any new things coming up that you want to share? Anything like that? Um. Well, we actually did cover most of it. The Windows 8 app I already mentioned that is coming up the next days rather than weeks, I hope. Um, other than that, no, just okay. keep playing with it and please send feedback. The more the better. Um, always looking to make it better. Very cool. Uh, Daniel, I appreciate you taking the time. We're going to, if I invited you back in a couple months to give us an update, I mean, it sounds like you guys are changing fairly rapidly at this point, uh -huh. adding new products, and, and maybe there's a right time to have you back to talk about some of the new things that are happening. Uh, I'd hope you'd come back on and kind of give us an update. Totally. Though, all right? uh, very totally. cool. Very very happy cool. To. Yep. Daniel, thanks for taking the time uh, to be with us tonight. We'll let you go. We know it's uh, it's uh, six six 6.45 on the West Coast, and it's probably time for you to have some dinner. So I'm sure you have a bunch of coding that you got to do tonight. <laughs> <It'll work. laughs> I, I do indeed. You do. So we'll let you go. <laughs> Daniel, thanks for spending some time with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it was great to meet you guys. And yeah, see you soon, hopefully. All right, have, have a great evening. You can go ahead and hang up when you're ready. Bye. You thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Good night. Okay. Uh, very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's great you got him on. It's uh, you know when you when you first mentioned it, I had not seen the technology before, but I've been every time I find one, uh, you know, Twonky was probably the closest one I found. And every demo I sat in at CES or on Twonky, everything worked perfect. And every time I ever tried to get Twonky to run at home, I could never get it to work. Mm. And, it just never worked properly. Um, this this one still has a few issues. He's he's still working through stuff. But um, when I first hit him, um, the, the first thing I had as an issue was uh, um, I installed it, and the next morning uh, malware bytes was going off that it was a, um, a malicious website was trying to ex you know trying to send data out of my computer, uh, and I I just grabbed the log file and sent it over to him and literally he responded within minutes uh, of asking me a couple of questions and grabbing up more info. So he's he's very responsive and very interested in uh, in in the product. So yeah. um, I I'd, I'd recommend everybody listening to this jump out grab it play with it. Um, it really uh, really seems to be an, a, a neat way of uh, mobilizing your audio products. Yeah, yeah, no, there's some great comments out in chat as well uh, for the folks that have listened. You know, if you do contact him, uh, let him know you, you heard it here. That'd be great to, you know, as we do, I'm doing, I've mentioned this on the podcast several times, I'm really working hard to fill the first 30 or 35 minutes of the show with some interesting content from small business, small tech companies. Just this is our target audience. These are guys that aren't getting on the big podcast but will come on and talk to us. There's some really interesting things there. And so let them know you heard it here on Home Tech, and, and uh, that's always good for me. That gets them excited about coming back on the show and, and helps me get uh, folks to come back. So even if you just want to shoot him, he said his email is on the site. Is that right? Yeah, if you go to uh, the site and just go to um, the FAQ, at the bottom of the FAQ is other questions. It's Daniel at onplayer.com. Oh, yeah. And it goes straight to him. No, very open. You know, you love, you got to love a story of four developers, San Francisco, you know, building an app that they really, they're going to, they want to take over the world with. And um, it, it's, uh, and I'm sure they're looking for some, you know, the, uh, eventually, I, I don't know what the VC is behind them. Certainly they got to have some support going on for that, but it's kind of exciting. I like it. I'm going to, I'll be honest. I, I, I don't try these products before the interview on purpose because I want to ask 
questions. If I do that, I'll, I'll, I won't ask the questions that the average guy wants to know, right? And so, I, Kevin, I appreciate you. You quickly, oh. we talked about this on Tuesday, and you did try it out, and I'm glad you did. That, that really added to uh, what we were trying to do here. But, um, no, some pretty cool stuff. I, I will. Um, any other? Uh, oh. um, I will remind uh, everybody listening that uh, next week we'll have the CEO of Mover.io. So this is a product that uh, Rennie first found for us back on, I think, 140 Nate. I'm making that up. I don't really know. Um, but uh, he first came to the podcast with Mover.io, a way to move your files between cloud storage uh, companies. So if you want to go between Amazon and Copy or between Box and Dropbox or whatever, you can set up these connectors and they'll move those files for you. You get up to 10 gig on their plan. And, uh, and there's some you gotta, you got to pay for some of that movement. But for folks who have bandwidth limitations, um, it might be a way around those. It might be worth paying for that to have some of that done. And uh, in, in I, so that's coming up next week. If you want to come back, uh, we'll have the again CEO of Mover.io on as well. I'm uh, Kevin. I'm super interested I, now. I'm thinking I might change the way I do my podcast stuff because the way I listen to my podcast. I mean, I yeah. might set that up with the on-air player, and that allows me to kind of listen to it anywhere. Yeah. No. This uh, I, I've not tried any other formats other than than the music uh, end of this. Um, you know, and, and now I'm thinking of all the questions I forgot to ask. It, you know, it would be, it, it would be interesting when you set it up. It lets you point at different, you know, folders. Um, you know, I'd almost want to keep podcasts separate from music yeah. and separate. Uh, and so, you know, that that'd be a you know, good question. I'll have to hit him up on the website to see if there's an easy right. way to do that. But right. yeah, that that would be very cool is to uh, just have that handoff transition as you walk in the house because, you know, and maybe it's a small set of the population, but whether it's podcasts or music, uh, you know, that that kind of thing happens all the time. I'd, I'd love a seamless way to go from the car to the house. Yeah, especially for me at work. Because I I'd pull into the parking lot and I'm just getting to the meat of the podcast and you know and then I again I could come in the office turn my phone you know put my phone in plug the speakers into it right but I've got some other stuff set up it would be super convenient as soon as I walk in the office just go play to this and bam it just starts playing right where I left off yep um so I it it, it um yeah that's pretty cool um. Let's see. I was going to say one more thing on. Oh, if you uh, so if you if you're going to try on Air Player and you want to give some feedback uh, that will play on the show, it'd be great. Love to have that. Uh, you can send it to me in a voicemail. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Just dial 402-478-8450. Sorry, that's kind of that's a U.S. number, and I I get uh, folks that are overseas. Um, there might be some charges associated with that. You can also, uh, as I'm going to uh, talk about here in just a few minutes, you can use Audioboo. So if you haven't, if you haven't looked at Audioboo in the last, actually they're on their third round of VC and in, in their third different company, I think, uh, making that up too. I don't know that for sure, but they did that. They launched. They kind of kind of faltered. Then they've kind of come back and they have some new management there at Audioboo. A U D I O B O O dot F M is that and. The whole, the whole concept started, it's kind of a Snapchat concept for audio. So you could record little audio, you know, imagine all your conversations being like you're leaving a voicemail. So instead of typing out an email, you can just send a, a audio voicemail to them. And so we've got uh, one I want to play for you here in just a second. Kevin, this is where I'm going to want you to put your thinking cap on. So listen yeah. to this call carefully. And if you're in the community, listen carefully. This is one of our listeners. And uh, he listens on Audioboo, which I thought was really cool. That's one of those places that I put uh, the podcast out every week. We do it on Podomatic, we do it on Spreaker, and we do it on Audioboo. And uh, I get, oh, it depends on the platform, but I get anywhere from 25 to 50 listens maybe on any one of those platforms. There's folks out there that listen to it there. But um, but he called, and uh, he'll announce his name. I, I'm, I don't want to butcher it. He'll do that in the call, but... Have a let me turn off this and have a listen to this message. Hey, what's going on? My name is Feliciano, and I've been following your show for quite some time now. I am into the whole tech stuff as well. I'm not very familiar with the whole home server stuff. That may be something that I may be interested in, but I've never looked into that kind of stuff. Um, 
so I don't really know much about it. I've, I've just. So I'll say homeservershow.com. That's where you need to go <laughs> if you're, if you're doing that. Homeservershow.com. Known, um, some things about it because I've been following you, and uh, you know the average guy. But uh, other than that, I just wanted to come on here with a question. I've been into computers since I was like in sixth grade. I then eventually got into the adaptive technology field because I lost my my vision in 2006. And you know I'm currently a uh, instructor to uh, people that are visually impaired. So I teach them how to use all the uh, talking computers, magnifiers, kind of stuff. You know, adaptive technology. But uh, the main reason I wanted to contact you was because I I purchased a Olympus LS14 digital recorder, and it has a SD card. And I wanted to know if there was some type of SD reader that could transmit that file from the SD card to my iPhone so I can be able to upload it to like Audioboo or, you know, other things on the internet. Um, I know I could, you know, do everything through a laptop, but sometimes I don't have the laptop around and I could, um, use something like this if it's available because um, it would be more convenient but um, I'm not sure if there's such a thing or something similar that could help me do that and I wanted to talk to you about that because you may have an answer for me or maybe another suggestion I don't know but um, I hope to hear from you soon and keep up with the average guy I am following your your podcasts, uh, the Home Network. Um, what is it? The Home Server Network. Which just drives me crazy sometimes that the I, people can't re- get they get. We've <laughs> talked about this. They get home tech and the average guy and all the other stuff mixed up. But let me finish the message here. I don't remember the exact name, but it's the average guy. I have um, this app called Downcast on my iPhone and. I, I'm pretty much getting podcasts from there. So uh, I hope you're able to get this message because I'm not sure if you keep up with the messages on here. And I do. I don't hear from you soon. I may have to just contact you on your website. No, he didn't have to. I, I sent him an audio boo back. Which method is available on your website. So we'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot. I thought that was really cool that yeah. I've never used Audioboo that way. And and I just got this email today, and it was like, you've got a message in Audioboo. And I was like, what? So I went <laughs> over there, and and uh, a couple things. His it's it's uh, his his Audioboo ID is the Blind Man 12V on Audioboo, if you want to follow him out there. Really cool that he's into technology. Oops, let me, let me mute this side. He's into technology that um, for, for visually impaired people. First of all, that's awesome. I oh, mean, absolutely. I, I'm I'm super I'm super impressed. That's an area that we don't it, honestly in our community we don't even think about. You know, we all make the assumptions. You can see everything. You can hear everything, right? Uh, uh, pretty cool. But so his issue was right. He's recording these things. Uh, the, he's got a he's got an audio recorder. And by yep. the way, his audio was dynamite coming yeah. in. Uh, he was obviously he was outside. Yep. You could hear the cars go by, but his audio was dynamite. Um, yeah, any he's thoughts? Got the, well, he's got an Olympus, which tend to be the really nice recorders. Um, so if I if I understood what he was saying, um, he was trying to determine a way to get the recordings off the Olympus onto um, was it his Mac or uh, I mean, onto the iPhone so that he could upload them. To audio boo. Obviously, the Olympus has got better audio quality than the iPhone does, so mm-hmm. he wants to record it on the Olympus, and then think about, okay, how could I switch this so it could get to my iPhone? So, you know, he said he could take that out, put it in his laptop, and do it that way. But yep. he's just thinking, this is what he's got in his hands. Somebody had mentioned like an iFi card. You know, uh, iFi is one of those that automatically moves that from a camera up to the network. 
um, or up to a network. But I don't know, Kevin, any, any other thoughts? Well, um, so I, I just wanted to double check, and the recording standards for the Olympus are uh, MP3 and WMA. So he, you know, if he's doing MP3, that would be compatible with the iPhone. Um, the I was, I was just trying to see if any of the Olympus, you know, not to soak him for a bunch of money, but uh, I wanted to see if the any of the Olympus products had their own Wi-Fi connectivity, just to see if they, oh. you know, yeah. were, were like cloud-ready versions. Um, the the iFi card is probably the first thing that I thought of as well. I mean, that's that's probably one of the easiest ways um, to get things to move from that point of view. Hey, what about this? So Bill uh, Bill Rockhold came on two weeks ago, and we talked about that Rav Power mm -hmm. uh, USB. I mean, it, it, it's a. I mean, it's got an SD slot in it. It's got a hard drive. It's on the network. It. You see that as a storage device, couldn't you not? If you're you you could put that SD card in there, it would re read it as a drive. Then on the iPhone, you would just go to that folder on there because it's a, it's a open and available on the network. Yep. Grab it, send it up. Grab yeah. power. I think let's see what show that was because he is a listener. So I think that was two shows ago. That is, um, hey, you were on show um, just recently, 156. Yep. <laughs> Let's see, Cyber Frontiers, here it is. So the review of it is, um, well, we posted a review first. So if you go, well, there's no no easy way. I think it's theaverageguy.tv slash ravpower, all one word, R-A-V-P-O-W-E-R. That'll get you to the review, and then the actual show is going to be show number 157. So theaverageguy.tv slash HT157 will get you there. Yeah, that'd be, so, and that's forty-four bucks. Yeah, no, that, that that may be an interesting way to do it, and that's, um, you know, he, ultimately he's going to have to get it into iTunes, you know, in in some fashion to get it onto the iPhone, so to say. So I mean, it's it's a little bit of the, um, you know, I'm I'm kind of defaulting back to. Um, no, know, what I think, just, Kevin, what I think he wants to do. It's just oh, have access to the file so he can push it up to audiobook. Push, got it. Got yeah. it. Right. Right. Yeah, no, that's that's true. So in that sense, he could he could get it off. Um, the, you know, Bill's device would be an easy way to do that. Uh, yeah. That's not, that's not a bad idea at all. Yeah, no, not intentionally done, <laughs> yeah. but but that was I was just thinking, hey, that's a that was a really good inexpensive device. It's multi-purpose. It'll charge your phone. You could plug your iPhone into it and charge it at the same time, if you wanted to. Um, mm -hmm. Not a bad little not a not a bad way to pair those together. Uh, other Jim said we should probably spell out iFi for him. So E Y E F I. That's a a, a, a little SD reader that you or a, a, I'm sorry, an SD card that has Wi-Fi capabilities built into the card. So you can send the data right off the card, right up to the network, and move it to a computer if you'd like. So not a bad. Uh, that would work automatically for his laptop, right? If he did an iFi card. Although I don't know. Well, that'd be interesting if that iFi card would work. In the can in this recorder, and when you're done, if it would automatically transmit up and then to a laptop automatically, that that, that, you, that you didn't uh, you didn't happen to jot down or, or catch which Olympus device he had, did you? No, I didn't. We'd have to re-listen to the. Okay. That's to fine. The, I just I just did a quick search, and uh, here's a, a review uh, January this year. Olympus introduces Wi-Fi packed voice uh, recorder that plays nice with your smartphone. So um, I'll, I'll do. That's very interesting, and, and I, I, I really am glad he called in because, uh, you know, we talk about the average guy, and I, I've spent some time lately on the, um, you know, a lot of the education stuff, uh, uh, STEM stuff, and you know, here in Minnesota, we seem to be talking a lot about the technology gap or the technology divide, and we. We think about it in lots of different terms, and one of the areas that I, I just totally forget about is um, folks with disabilities, you know, blindness, deaf, you know, um, you know, other mobility, skill, mobility, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, my 
my daughter and I were watching a technology show. It was uh, Asian technology, and Japan is spending just a lot of time realizing that their population is aging, and they're working on robotics and different things from uh, mobility and interaction and realizing you get older, you don't see as well. So how do you, how do you have computer devices to interact with people that don't see that well? So um, very interesting topic, real interesting stuff. Other Jim says it looks like Toshiba has a product called Flash Air and a Transcend Wi-Fi SD card. So that might be an option to look into. Other Jim, if you can throw a price in chat, that would be great. Uh, just to kind of see what that uh, what that would run. Um, yeah, that used to be an impossible problem, and now there's I think there's a couple different ways to do that. Oh, very cool. Well, uh, no, I do appreciate the call in on that. And again, if you go to audioboo, A-U-D-I-O-B-O-O uh, dot F-M, I am just Jay Collison out there if you want to give that a try. We also post the podcast out there as well. And, and you know, it, again, I have, I'll be honest, I have posted to audioboo for a year and a half maybe with nothing. <laughs> no, no feedback. You know, audioboo came to me and, and they, their marketing people approached me one day and said, hey, we'd like you to, We'd like you to bring your podcast to Audioboo, and we're going to give you nearly unlimited space, unlimited bandwidth, if you'll just come and promote, you know, promote your show out there. So we did that, and they featured us a couple times. Actually, we did a, a back show, 130 maybe something. We did the iPad Air. Amish Gangar from Gallup joined me that night, and we did the the iPad Air. That has that's been that's done really well on Audioboo. That's picked up a couple hundred views out there. Um, that's done the best by far, but I I hadn't really ever thought it would go anywhere. I just kept doing it, and uh, this is kind of cool. To get your message in, a good way to get your audio message in to me, just Jay Collison, you can follow me out there. Also, 402-478-8450, and other Jim says that Toshiba, 38 bucks U.S., so right in that price range, 40 45 I like that RAV power device just because it's a battery and an SD card reader and a Wi-Fi device, and uh, Bill really liked it. So it's um, it's one of those kinds of things. And remember, if you purchase any of this stuff, of course you help us out if you go out to the Average Guy uh, Amazon affiliate link. That's just the AverageGuy.tv slash Amazon. You guys continue to be super generous with that, by the way. Um, we continue to set records and. We, I, I've got some money we can do some uh, reviews with. So if you got something in the hundred dollar range that you want to review, and uh, I don't know, maybe I should smart things. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe this is one of these. I should buy that for him. Uh, you, uh, send me an email, Jim at theaverageguy.tv. Let's not let's stop trading email or uh, voice messages on Audio Boo, but send me your email so we can get hooked up. Maybe I can get you something along those lines. Love to have you try that out, whether it's the Rav Power device or something else along those lines. Uh, we use the Amazon dollars. The other gym was talking about Newegg, and they actually canceled my Newegg affiliate relationship and won't restart it again, so Newegg is dead to me <laughs> along those lines. But uh, you guys have been super, uh, super, super, super generous on Amazon, and I appreciate that. So if you want to review something, let me know. Uh, send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv. We'll get that done. Kevin, how is your uh, how's your uh, your home server modification plate selling? You know the the Skundagi, What do we call that thing? Uh, that, that's the uh, the SDM, the Skundagi disk module. <laughs> there we it's, go. Uh, it's it's um, it's doing it's doing okay. You know, I, I I sell. I probably get an order per day at least and uh, you know they, they kind of bunch up a little bit a couple at a time there was a bit of pent-up demand um, yeah in and, and I, I to simplify things I'm using the US Postal Service to ship um, their their one rate boxes tend to be you know very affordable in the US and at least um, it seems like shipping to to Canada and the rest of the world um, the rate's not outrageously good, but no. I don't I don't have to fight with customs very much. Um, but oddly enough, I, I'm getting a lot of orders. Um, yeah, I got somebody out of South Korea bought four. Uh, and and the nice thing about the one rate shipping is, the more you pack in the box, it doesn't cost you anything extra on shipping. Um, I just got an order today for uh, somebody in Germany, and another order yesterday for someone in. Um, 
one of the Czech, um, I think it was Czechoslovakia, if I'm not mistaken. Czech, it would be the Czech Republic. Czech probably. Republic, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I, I'm, I'm getting a lot of, um, uh, got a couple out of Malaysia. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, the, the, uh, between Canada and, and Europe and Asia, I'm, I'm doing okay. Um, <laughs> I, I've, I've nice. had two, not two, so many here in the U.S.? Um, you know, it's probably about 50-50 right now, um, 50 percent in, 50 percent out. So it's uh, and the thing is, I've done no advertising. I want, I just wanted to work the bugs out of the process before I started promoting it. So um, this week I'm not traveling for work, so I'll I'll probably do a few things to uh, try and drum up a little business. But uh, yeah. So far, everybody that's got one seems uh, happy with it, and it seems to be uh, they seem to be working working well. You'll know you hit the big time when um, you get a Chinese ripoff. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm fully I'm fully expecting that. Then, you, know, then, I, you, just, then you just quit, and you're like, my job here is done. I've 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 said from day one, I I made it too heavy. Um, you know, it's 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 in a way, it's kind of too nice for a bracket. It's thick metal and it's countersunk and everything else. And and uh, you know, it, honestly, we all know somebody could stamp out ten thousand of them in China and sell them for five bucks a piece. So, yeah. You know. <laughs> but why would they? It's such why a specialized product, you know. <laughs> that's uh, that is that true. Standpoint. If if folks so if folks are wondering what we're talking about, uh, Kevin built a bracket that holds a two additional hard drives for the Gen 8 micro server. Just Gen 8, right? Just Gen 8, yes. Just for the Gen 8. And so it allows you to add two additional drives to the Gen 8 box. That's been a real popular topic over at the, uh, the home server show. So if you go to the forums, that's the best place, homeservershow.com slash forums. And if they wanted to look at the bracket, is there a shortcut to that? Yeah, if you if you go under Gen 8, it's um, the store is tagged in one of the top. Uh, it's pinned to the top of the list under Gen 8. So just okay. look under Gen 8 and... You'll find it there. Very cool, and uh, you can go out and take a peek at what we're talking about. There was that's quite a story. If you're if you're a listener of Home Tech but you haven't really gotten a home server uh, show, that has been a story that we've been following for the last couple months. As uh, John Stutzman and I think uh, who else who else jumped in on that to help you develop that thing? Uh, Lo Lone Wolf uh, is is what he goes by over on the uh, on the home server site. So John and uh, Joe Miner and Lone Wolf have been my uh, beta test crew, and uh, cool. has has worked out very well. And yeah. uh, you know, and and uh, continue to learn with it too. You know, the I I, I thought I kind of took all the parameters into effect on it, and um, one of the guys uh, found that you know really tall USB sticks bump into it. So I've had to you know uh, make a little edit in my uh, nomenclature just to point that out. Not a not a deal breaker, but just something to be aware of as well. Now you know how these vendors feel, right, when they sell these products and crazy people like us say, <laughs> well, if you're standing on your head and the moon is in its fourth phase, and it doesn't work, you know, and you're like, come on, are you kidding me? Well, and, and yeah. honestly, the thing that slowed me down the most on this whole deal is the fact that my wife is an attorney. So uh, I, uh, I had to, you know, she, she kept looking at it saying, can they hurt themselves with it? Can they, can they? wreck their server with it and, and and in all candor I I had considered um doing like some power cables and some other more active accessories and uh, the more I talked to guys I know in the computer case kind of business you know they all told me hey the minute you go to something active that carries power you've you've got to jump into UL and uh, it just it just kind of stopped me in my tracks yeah yeah, it gets gets a little more complicated that way. No, this is cool. I mean, I think it's been great for the community to to kind of gather around this and a lot of guys. It kind of tells you how many Gen 8s we've got out there. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I've said this before, but the home server community is not dead by any stretch of the means. No. I mean, it's it's alive and well. And I look over at the forums. I'm not in them a lot. I haven't had a lot of time. I mentioned in the pre-show that Gallup, uh, the Gallup podcast has now gone weekly on me, which is good. We've had a lot of success with that. And if you're, if you're, uh, if you like to follow me over on the Gallup side, you can, uh, you can just jump over to coaching.gallup.com. I do just about every single interview and every single podcast that we, surprise, surprise, right? That I do all the podcasts. 
for them. And we just went weekly. We have a, a brand new program called Theme Thursday, where we dig into each one of the Gallup uh, strength themes that uh, that we have, and that has been very well very well received. Did a big email mass mailing this week and uh, generated a couple thousand for the live show on Friday. So noon central one. By the time you get this, it'll already be done. But noon central one p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Oh gosh, that's tomorrow. Um, we we will have this. This could be a record-breaking show for me, which will be kind of cool to have. What I think will be somewhere. We have over two thousand registrations now. So. What I think will be about a thousand live, because you don't get everybody. It's about 45 or 50 percent um, of those folks that register, and uh, that'll be a couple hundred in chat. So of course, you know, on home tech, we run tonight it was a little thin. We run uh, 10 or 15 out here at any any given time, and depends on the evening. There's some good shows. I mean, uh, Idol is on, and The Voice is on, and Dancing with the Stars. Although those have already those were early in the week, but. Um, we uh, we appreciate you, the listener, who uh, comes out each and every week. Kevin, anything else you want to, while I've got you, anything else we should cover, any interesting tech stuff that uh, in the next few minutes you'd like to just chat with? Um, boy, the uh, so n- not microservers. Yeah, because yeah, Dave <laughs> chastised me every time we talk about home server stuff on this show. So if it's home server related, we need to get you on the home server show. Uh, no, I, I tell you, the, the so I everybody who has watched these for a while, knows I'm um, not only obsessive, but I'm compulsive. And uh, my, my compulsion lately, I'm, I'm very interested in the uh, home automation products. And, and really, I went from about a year ago thinking that there was, I, I couldn't find, a, I couldn't think of a good application for it. Um, the, the product that I really like right now is, uh, is smart things. Um, very cost effective to get into the, the hub uh, runs you $99 uh, and and that's all you need to get started now much like crack cocaine it, uh, it it reels you in because all the light switches are 50 bucks and the plugins are 50 bucks and the motion sensors are 50 bucks but um, you know they're, they're motion sensors their door opening closing sensors you know you can you can really do um, some neat things around your house um, first thing I did was one of the uh, water sensors. Um, I've got a drain in the basement. We've got a large tree out front. About every two years, I get I get a backed up drain in the basement. And this thing, I tested it with a glass of water, and it it sends me a text immediately um, when it senses water backing up on that drain. Uh, the the um, uh, so that that stuff's way cool, um, and and the smart things, you know, lets you merge these different technologies together, uh, and and so you don't have multiple interfaces. You can do it through one. Um, the other thing that I've been playing with, uh, I, I shot a picture of it. Uh, you know, I, I really thought the 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 smart watch technologies was just about the stupidest thing that could ever happen. You know, so I'm so lazy I can't grab my phone, but I I'll look at my watch. And uh, for those that follow the Facebook page, I I ended up with one at a charity event. Uh, nobody was bidding on a Sony. Smartwatch, so I threw a you know low bid was seventy five bucks, and I ended up with it for seventy five bucks. Um, frankly, it, I, I don't I don't believe they're worth the two hundred and fifty dollars they are right now. But that technology is hap- you know things are happening there very quickly, and you know, Jim and I have both played with the Fitbit technology. Um, Fitbit's got to kind of watch it because I I think you know already if I get this watch on my wrist that is pretty much a mini tablet and it is Bluetooth connected back to my phone or my tablet, its ability to gather up information or give me information is is kind of a cool thing. So I, I can, you know, as much as there have been a couple of articles lately that the wearable technology um, is just a, a flash in the pan. It's never going to catch on. Um, I, I think it will. I, I, I think it, it, it's going to, it's going to take. Yeah, I think it, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I was, I met with some of the Garmin folks. Uh, we were out doing some recruiting, and and they didn't have engineers out there, but I had some of the recruiters and such, and I said, hey, so when is Garmin just going to embed steps? The concept of stepping or the concept of climbing uh, stairs. Because in a Garmin watch, those are the only two things you're really missing. So 
instead of, you know, that Garmin watch is on all day. The ones the runners wear, you know, they got GPS and you can start them and it tracks. That's great when you're outdoors. The rest of the day, it's just an expensive watch, right? I mean, so take that Fitbit technology, add in steps. I'm sure it's got the right hardware in there mm-hmm. that would allow you to track steps both walking this way and walking this way. Dude, the, the Fitbit Force, at, well, it's already a recall. So, you know, Fitbit's got a big problem on their hands with that, with the implementation of that. But you have a Fitbit Force, which did, I mean, you couldn't find one of those at Christmas time. They were so popular. Um, and and I, I, I just said, why, Garmin, why aren't you doing this? And they're like, well, we'll take it back to the engineers. I'm like, look, if I thought of it, <laughs> okay, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a engineer. You guys should be thinking about these things. So, um, yeah, some pretty cool um, technologies coming up. Last uh, last thing I'm working on, I will share with you, is and I'll and I will do a review of this for um, for your website. Uh, my daughter needed a new computer, and I kept thinking about what kind of technology I wanted to get her. And this is my example of uh, you know sometimes the I, I, I've been having a real problem lately with. Um, the media experts, you know, the talking heads at Engadget and, you know, these different websites who think they know everything. And, and so Acer, you can question the quality. I've actually had okay luck with Acer products over the years. Um, but the, the, uh, the R7 here was this unique design that um, it got panned because the, the keyboard on it is way out front the touchpad is back here, and this hinge, um, people kind of beat it up because it it doesn't lay 100% flat when it mm. goes down. That's a freaky hinge, man. It, it is, but the thing with this is, is it sold new for $1,000. It's it's a 1080p, 15-inch screen, um, and an i5 processor, and uh, it's an IPS screen as well, so the oh. thing is just beautiful. Yeah. And they these I just bought one of these refurbed on Woot for four seventy nine. Oh, that's so, a deal. So so you know and and the the different modes you think about a kid full touch screen, so she uses it in the, you know all these different modes whether she's playing a game or watching you know videos on it. Um, so I, I I like this one from the point of view that. Um, it's one of those where all the reviewers just just beat it up. Whenever Woot has these for four seventy nine, they sell out in two hours. Yeah, that's a heck of a deal. <laughs> it's a great. That's a for. I would put up with that crazy hinge for five hundred bucks. Well, and, and you and I have talked about the common area computer. If you don't have room for a big all in one, this is like a perfect, um, you know, kitchen counter um, common area computer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, very cool. That's a great. And so, is that available on Amazon, or is it is Woot the best place to get it? Woot's the place that I've always seen them, but I would definitely um, put a find. You know, Amazon and Woot are blending so much stuff these days. I would definitely um, put a put a, uh, a a watch out on Amazon because they get these as well in in the refurb state. So. Um, you know, they're, they're pretty cool devices. Interesting. All right, good stuff, Kevin. We did. I didn't even. I didn't even prompt you for a deal, and he gave me one. Very nice. <laughs> Nicely done. It's always good to have you. You're our deal master, and uh, and all things on the uh, on the Facebook group. If you haven't joined the Facebook group, you should head over to facebook.com/group/slash/the-average-guy. Easier way: theaverageguy.tv/slash/facebook, and that'll take you to our group. And we just crossed over the 200 mark in that group, and. Uh, some great conversations going on out there, and uh, I learned something new. And yes, Nathaniel from Times, I do sweep through. You know, uh, let, let me just say, full disclosure, when you guys buy stuff on Amazon, I can't see who buys it. So all I can see is what's bought. So what I do is I go through that list from time to time, and I find really cool gadgets that you guys have bought, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. And I grab the URL, and I post it out on the Facebook group so everybody can share it. So if you're buying something you don't want me to see, I, have, I can't see your name, so be rest assured. I have no idea who it is. Uh, but Nathaniel kind of, kind of, I won't say he called me out on the Facebook group this week, but he was like, hey, I've noticed a lot of things I'm buying <laughs> you're featuring. <laughs> That's you know, the, because you're a cool guy, Nathaniel. Exactly. I'm like, well, you're buying cool stuff, man. I can't <laughs> help myself. So he bought this 
I don't know if he'd bought it, but there was this really cool concept of a USB charger that was kind of a flat panel with these little dividers. And you could list, you know, it had five USB ports along the bottom and all of them have the right voltage. And then you would, you could flip those up. And one of them, even in the one he put out there, didn't have this, but one of them I saw later, I think 65, 70 bucks, had a little tray where you could hide the cords yep. and stuff underneath. And it was pretty cool. So that if you have a, you have a home, you're charging a lot of devices. That was one of the cooler things that I saw out there. I was like, oh yeah, this is a good idea. So speaking, uh, let me go back to home automation for just one minute. If uh, if you don't know, we've started a home automation forum. So if you want to join one early and get in, if you go to HA, just the letters HA for home automation, HAforums.com, you can go out there. It looks a lot like the home server show forums and just as nice because it's run by the same guys. And uh, so all your home automation stuff uh, out there in one spot, HAforums. Dot com. Kevin, can I uh, in the next couple of weeks? Can you let me know when you're ready, and we'll have you on, and we'll kind of do your home automation special. Sure. And we'll just kind of walk through some of the stuff that you've been using. Maybe you can pull a few of the sensors, and we can take because this smart, these smart things have kind of caught on, and I think, I think we're finally getting to the point where home automation is going to make it for the average guy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Nest made it a little bit easier, then these guys are making it even easier. Yep, absolutely. No, it's uh, that, that's that, that's where I finally was able to jump into this deal is is uh, you know th th it's not a lot of uh, black magic and you know trying to you know find different bridges to hook things together. Right. There's actually standards you know behind it. Z-Wave and Zigbee and and these boxes talk to each other and and uh, you know much much like the gentleman we just talked to um, you know the I got a a Twitter feed here a couple weeks ago and it was, uh, you know, smart things, um, uh, open, open department meeting, I think it was. And I, I clicked on it and it said starting in 10 minutes and I saw, Oh, it was 10 minutes ago. So I clicked on it, you know, and, and it asked if it could turn my camera on. And the next thing I know I'm in a, I don't remember, I think it was blue jean was the technology yeah, they were using. Yep. Yep. So and and boom, I'm in, and and the the first face I see on the screen is Ben, who's the main designer at Smart Things, and and he goes, oh, it looks like we have a schoon doggy joining. Hey, how you doing? And I'm, I'm kind of like, well, I didn't know I was joining a a video, <laughs> you know, um, but it was great because it was their design team, and you know, we were chatting about you know. Uh, any issues, problems, oddities, you know, things that we were running into, and it's it's kind of phenomenal dealing with these uh, smaller companies because uh, you can get some pretty ready access uh, straight to their developers. Guess who I'm going to send a note to? <laughs> yeah, Let's see if we can get them on the show. It'd be kind of cool to have them on with you. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll just see if I can get. To, what was his name? Who was the? It's uh, Ben. Let me. That's good enough. I can track it down from there. But um, yeah, or I'll contact them and say, "Hey, can we get you on the podcast? We'll we'll have you guys talk." And that, I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, let me bring this thing in for landing, at least on the recorded version. I appreciate uh, you, the listener, who got man. If you've hung on this long, you're awesome. <laughs> let me just say, let me just say, you're an hour and twenty minutes, and I know you guys break this stuff up when you listen to it and such, but I do appreciate you making it all the way to this point. Next week, Mover.io, as I talked about. The week of the 3rd, April 3rd, we're going to do a financial a financial tech, but nothing like you've ever heard before. So you want to come out, and I still have to confirm the guest on that. We I booked that a long time ago, and I want to make sure he's coming out. But we're going to talk about kind of the bridge between tech and finance. So if you're kind of a finance geek or you, you like to do all things money along those lines, we're going to talk a little bit about some of those products. It's been a while since we've done that, and so I thought it'd be fun to bring that on. And then on April 17th, Mike Howard and his gang from uh, uh, JPEG Dura is going to join us, and uh, Mike and uh, Sess and Tim will all be on. We're going to talk about photography tech, a chance for you to ask your questions. You know Mike's got a show over at jpegdura.com, but not everybody gets a chance to listen to it. This is a chance for you to hear it and listen to it in the feed. That'll be April 17th. That'd be a great one to join us live. For. And then uh, I have David Washington. He's a Microsoft evangelist uh, up in Minneapolis, up in your neck of the woods yep. uh, there, Kevin. He is going to come back on the show. He's had a child and, uh, and all those things. I couldn't get him on any earlier because he's been busy. David will come back on the show. He was the guy that worked on the keyboard for the Surface 2. And so his he and his team worked on that keyboard. And so he's a, he's a good guy. We'll have a lot to hear from him. 
Then Michael Crump is back on the show May 1st. So we got a lot of good stuff coming up for you here in the next couple weeks, and uh, I want to thank you for listening. We're out here every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out at theaverageguy.tv slash live. And uh, we will be back again next week with Mover.io. And uh, thanks again for using the Amazon affiliate link, theaverageguy.tv slash Amazon. Kevin, thanks for coming Absolutely. In tonight as well. Great to have you. And we want to thank Daniel for coming in. A really interesting interview. And glad that I'm kind of moving to this new format. This is kind of cool. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited about having these industry guests on first. And... Uh, uh, other Jim said he knows he's awesome. He doesn't need any. <laughs> uh, it's it's I like this having these industry experts on first and then uh, talking a little bit about it uh, behind the scenes. So kind of a format we'll follow for a while and see how that goes. And with that, we'll say good night, everybody in chat. Thanks for coming out. Good night, everybody.